going to put in. one in this video we are going to take a look at another example of calculating support reaction for indeterminate beam if you've not watched part one try to watch part one i'm going to put the link in the description box below or you can also click the card on the screen and also if this is the first time you're coming across my channel i make content on civil engineering so if you're interested in civil engineering content do not hesitate to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red subscribe button and also hit the bell notification icon so that whenever i release a new video you'll be the first to get notification with that being said let's take a look at this example now if you take a look at the screen we have a beam that has a pin support at point a a roller support at point b and another roller support at point c then we have a rectangular distributed load of 20 kN per meter and this is distributed throughout the length 10 meter. So the span length from point A to point B is 5 meter, while the span length from point B to C is also 5 meter. So we are going to have four unknown reactions on this beam. At point A, because this is a pin support, we are going to have two unknown reactions. So we are going to have an unknown vertical reaction AY, and we are also going to have an unknown horizontal reaction AS. So basically, I assume the direction of uh, this uh, forces. Now also at point B, we are going to have one unknown reaction, BY, because this is a roller support. Then at point C, we are also going to have one unknown reaction, CY. Now, as you can see, we are having four unknown reactions. And we are used to having three unknown uh, reactions. And that is for statically determined beam. But in this case, we are having four unknown reactions, meaning this beam is statically indeterminate. So, how do you know the beam is statically indeterminate? This is when the number of reaction is greater than the number of equilibrium equation. So, as you can see, the number of reaction we have here is 4. And the number of equilibrium equation we have is 3. We have just 3 equation of equilibrium. So, because 4 is greater than 3, then meaning this uh, beam is statically indeterminate. So, this is statically indeterminate. Statically indeterminate. And this is statically indeterminate to the first degree because we have four unknown reactions. So it is statically indeterminate to the first degree. So meaning we have one redundancy. So this is what it means. It means we have one redundancy. So what do we do? This is where the method of superposition comes into play. So because we have one redundancy, so we are going to use the method of superposition to try to calculate the four reactions. Now the first step you usually take is you first need to identify the redundant. So you need to identify the redundant in the beam. As you can see on this beam, we have a pin support at point A, a roller support at point B, and another roller support at point C. Now, what you are going to do is, you are going to say, how do I make this beam statically determinate? That is, that is, which reaction can I remove in order for this beam to be statically determinate? If I remove the roller support at point B, we are going to be left with just the pin support at point A and the roller support at point C. So, meaning this is going to make the beam statically determinate. So, we now have theory, theory on known reaction. So, we can easily solve that using the equation of equilibrium. So, you will understand this better now. So after removing the redundant, we are going to add up the loading and we are also going to add up the redundant such that when I add up the load and the redundant, we are still going to arrive at the initial beam. So the first step is we are going to take the loading structure first, then we are going to add this to the redundant structure. So the loading structure is going to look something like this. So we have a pin support here, then we have a ruler support at this point then we have the load and the load is 20 kilonewton per meter now we are not going to have the roller support at point b because this is the redundant so we are we are we are taking this at so take note of that so the distance is the distance is going to be 10 meter so this is what we call the loading structure.
So now we are going to add this to the redundant structure. As you can see, we have just uh, one load on this beam. So that is why we, we are having just one loading structure. So we are going to add this to the redundant structure. So I'm going to say plus. So the redundant structure is going to look something like this. So we have the pin support at point A. Then we have the rollers support at point C. Then at point B, this is the redundant. So we are going to have the redundant BY acting upward. So this is the redundant structure. So now, as you can see, if I add the loading structure to the redundant structure, I'm still going to get the same beam. So this is what you will usually do. We break up the loading structure with the redundant structure, such that when we add up both, we are still going to arrive at our initial beam. As you can see over here, if we add this loading structure with the redundant structure, we are still going to, have at, we are still going to arrive at the initial beam. So now, the next step is you are going to take a look at the deflection due to the loading structure and the deflection due to the redundant structure. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the vertical deflection on the redundant. That is the vertical deflection on the uh, roller support B. We know that the vertical deflection at the roller support B is going to be equal to zero. There will be no vertical deflection at this point. So we're going to use this knowledge to calculate the redundant. So we're going to see the deflection at point B is equals to zero. So we are going to add up the deflection due to the loading structure, then plus the deflection due to the redundant uh, structure. And this is going to be at a distance of 10 meters, as you can see over here. So it's going to be the deflection due to the loading structure, then plus the deflection due to the redundant structure. And we know that the deflection at the redundant, that is the deflection at point B is equal to zero. There will be no vertical deflection. So this is going to be equal to zero. And the deflection due to the loading structure is going to be at a distance of 10 meter, then plus the deflection due to the redundant structure, which is, which is also going to be at a distance of 10 meter, should be equal to zero. So with this knowledge, we can calculate the redundance. So now, the deflection due to the loading structure, the deflection due to the structure, how can you get the deflection? First of all, let me draw the deflected shape. The deflected shape will look something like this. Why the deflected shape for the total structure will look something like this because this is going uh, upward. Now for the loading structure, we are going to have a negative displacement because you can see it is displacing downward. Why for the redundant structure, we are going to have a positive displacement because it is displacing upward. So meaning for the loading structure, we are going to have a negative displacement here. Then for the redundant structure, we are going to have a positive displacement. And this is the distance of 10 meters. So all you need to do, you just need to use your beam deflection uh, chart to get the deflection. Uh, due to the loading structure and the deflection due to the redundant structure. So we're going to be taking a look at the type of deflection we are going to be experiencing when we have a rectangular distributed uh, load. As you can see, when we have a simply supported beam with a rectangular load, the deflection is going to be negative 5W L raised to the power of 4 then divided by 384EI. So this is going to be equals to negative 5w l raised to the power of 4 then divided by 384e i then plus so what is the deflection due to the redundant and uh, structure so we're also going to take a look at the deflected and shape when we have a simply supported beam with a point load acting on the beam so as you can see when we have a simply supported beam with a point load acting on the beam the deflection is going to be negative PL raised to the power of 3 divided by 48EI. But this is acting downward. But in our case, the load is acting upward. So meaning it is going to be positive instead of negative. So we're going to have positive P. The P, which is the load, is going to be BW. Then multiply by L raised to the power of 3. Then divided by 48EI. I. So this should be equals to zero. So because we know that EI is constant, so the EI are going to cancel out because they are constant, so they are going to cancel out. 
So now we just need to input our values so that we can calculate for BW. So this is going to be negative 5, then multiply by W. So W is basically the distributed load, 20 kN per meter. So this is negative 5, then multiply by 20 kN per meter, then multiply by the length. So what is the length? The length is 10 meters, as you can see over here. So I'm going to get multiply by 10 meter, then raised to the power of 4, then divided by 38, sorry, divided by 38, 4, then plus by, then multiply by the length. So the length is 10 meter. As you can see, this is the length 10 meter. So this is going to be 10 meter, then raised to the power of 4, then divided by 48, then this is equals to 0. So all we need to do, we just need to use our calculator to calculate for by. So if you use your calculator to calculate these values over here, you are going to get the value as negative 2604.17 kiloniton. Then if you use your calculator to calculate these values, you are going to get the value as 20.83 by. Then this is equals to zero. So all you need to do, you just need to divide this value by this value to get by. And the negative is going to turn to positive because when this crosses the sign of equality, it turns to positive. So if you calculate that using your calculator, you are going to get by is equals to 125 kN. So this is the value of by. So now we have calculated by and this is 125 kN. So many we already know one support reaction. So we are left with three support reactions. So we can easily calculate the other reactions using equation of equilibrium. So now we know By is equal to 125 kN. So we can easily calculate other reactions using equation of equilibrium. So we can calculate CY, we can calculate AY. And for AS, AS is going to be automatically equal to zero because we don't have any horizontal force acting on this beam. So AS is going to be automatically equal to zero. So this is equal to zero. So now we are left to just AY and CY. So I'm going to say summation of moments at point A is equal to zero and all the movements in the counterclockwise direction should be positive while all the movements in the clockwise direction should be negative. So if we take the moment at point A, it's going to try to rotate this beam in the counterclockwise direction. So we're going to have a positive value. So this is going to be positive CY then multiplied by the distance. So the distance from CY to point A is 10 meter as you can see over here. So this is CY multiplied by 10 meter. Then for BY, we already know BY. BY is 125 kiloniton. So if we apply a force of 125 kN at point B, which relative to point A, it's going to try to rotate the beam in the counterclockwise direction. So we're going to have a positive value as well. So this is positive 125 kN. Then multiply by the distance, which is 5 meter. That is the distance from point B to point A. So for the rectangular distributed load, we need to resolve the load into its resultant. And how can we do this? We just need to take the area of this rectangle. So it's going to be 20 kN per meter, then multiply by the length, which is 10 meter. So 20 multiply 10, this is going to give us 200. So this is going to be acting at the middle of this um, beam because we're having a rectangle. So the load is 2 kN. So if we apply a load of 200 kN with relative to point A, it's going to try to rotate the beam in the clockwise direction. So we're going to have a negative value. So this is going to be negative 200 kN, then multiply by the distance, which is uh, 5 meter. So we don't have any additional uh, load that is going to cause moment because AY is not going to produce any moment because this is acting at the point of interest. So this is going to be equal to 0. So this is going to be 10 meter multiply CY then plus. So 125 kiloniton multiply 5 meter. This is going to give us 1250 kiloniton meter then minus 200 kiloniton multiply uh, 5 meter. This is going to give us 1000 kiloniton meter. Then this is equals to zero. 
So if we do the mass, we just need to calculate for CY. So if you do the mass, we're going to get CY is equals to 37.5 kilonewton. So this is the value for CY. So we have the support reaction CY. And because we are having a positive uh, value, meaning our assumption is correct, this uh, force is indeed acting upward. So now we are left with just um, AY. So first of all, let me write the value of CY. CY is equals to 37.5 kilonewton. So now how can we calculate AY? AY, we just need to take summation of all the forces in the vertical direction equals to zero. Then we can easily calculate AY. So we are going to say summation of all the vertical forces is equals to zero. And we are going to make an assumption. We are going to say all the forces acting upward is positive, while all the forces acting downward is negative. So as you can see, CY is acting upward, and this is 37.5. So we are going to have 37.5 kilonewton. Then we're having BY. BY is also acting upward, and we have a force of 125 kilonewton. So this is going to be positive. So this is positive 125 kilonewton. Then we are having 200 kilonewton, and this is acting downward. So it's going to be negative. So this is negative 200 kilonewton. Then we are having AY. AY is acting upward, so this is going to be positive. So this is positive AY, then is equals to zero. So what you need to do, you just need to use your calculator. So if you use your calculator, you are going to get AY is equals to 37.5 kilonewton. So as you can see, this is the value for AY. As you can see, because we are having a positive value, meaning the reaction is acting upward, meaning our assumption is indeed correct. So these are the support reactions. So CY is 37.5 kN acting upward. AY is also 37.5 kN acting upward. And also BY is equal to 125 kN. And this load is and this reaction is also acting upward, meaning our assumption is correct. So these are the support reactions. Now, one way to know if your reactions are correct or not is what you need to do is you need to add up the reactions acting upward. And when you add these reactions, they need to be equal to the load acting downward in order for the forces to counteract each other, that is in order for the forces to cancel out each other so that the beam will be static, in order for the beam not to run away from us. Now, if you calculate this 37.5, which is CY, plus 125, which is um, BY, then plus AY, which is also 37.5, plus 37.5. If you calculate this, you find out that we're also going to get 200 kilonewtons. So meaning 200 kilonewton acting upward is going to counteract 200 kilonewton acting downward. So meaning the beam is going to be static. The beam is not running away from us. So meaning we are okay. So if they counteract each other, meaning your answer is correct. But if you get a different value after adding up the reaction starting upward, if you, if you get a different value, different from the load acting downward, meaning your Reactions are not correct. We need to correct them because it will not make the beam balance and we need to make the beam balance We need to make the beam and uh, sit still. We don't want the beam to run away from us So whenever you calculate your support reaction, always make the check by checking if your Reaction acting upward is equal to the load acting downward So this is how we can use method of superposition to calculate the support and reactions for a statically indeterminate beam.